Hello, and welcome to the second part of my GSX Beginner's Guide. Before we dig deeper into the specifics, we need to make a step back to understand the basics. So, relax, grab a drink, and a snack. Here we go. What is GSX? GSX is a comprehensive enhancement of everything related to ground services and activities in Microsoft Flight Simulator, which improves every airport, both default and third party. By both enhancing existing services, but also adding entirely new services not available in the simulator, with an extensive set of customization features and airport enhancements, worldwide replacement of default jetway models. By default, MSFS has only one jetway model, which looks the same all over the world. GSX will replace the default model with three different variations like smooth panels, corrugated panels, and glass panels, each one available in more than 300 different logos of many airports and operators all around the world, and different color variations. These jetways will perform exactly like the default one, since they are not controlled by GSX logic. They will just look better and offer better visual quality than the default one. In addition to that, GSX replaced also the default bridge models called Jetway Links in MSFS parlance to match the look of the replaced jetway they are associated with. While products that replace default jetways are not new in MSFS, they always had the same limitation of being able to install only one model at a time because they just replaced the default Asobo jetway model itself, meaning even if the jetways were different, they will still look all the same. GSX goes away with this limitation because it doesn't replace the Asobo model. Instead, it comes with a set of replacement BGLs for all airports that have jetways in the real world, about 900 which contains only the replaced jetways, so we can have different jetways models on every airport and possibly even on every different gate, each one with their matching operator logos. Here's an example of different jetway models at different gates at KSFO. In Europe, the glass model is more common here how they look like at EDDM. These .bgl files are included with GSX, and have been created offline by FSDT by applying the same rules which are normally used to select operators and with this method we can also replace the jetway bridges with a matching style without having to run any configuration utilities since all different models are installed at the same time. Worldwide replacement of default ground services by installing GSX, many default ground vehicles will be replaced with better looking models and most importantly, with colors and liveries appropriate for each airport, regions and airport services. In order to understand better what GSX does to enhance default ground services and why it does it better than other replacement products, it's important to have some grasp how the default ground services work, which are divided in two main categories living world vehicles. These are the vehicles that wanders around on the airport and are created automatically by MSFS to populate an airport but are not performing any kind of services either on your airplane or any AI airplane. At this time those vehicles can only be customized by region not by airport. The world is divided in 24 regions each one identified with a letter so for example the US are mostly in region B but some areas are Region C and others Region P or S. These divisions are more related to climatic areas rather than countries, and when applied to living world vehicles and operators, there are some compromises to accept. Case in point, Region B contains most of the northern part of the U.S. and Canada, which means you'll see living world vehicles with U.S. logos in Canada and Canadian operators in the U.S. There's no way around this, and every product that replaces default ground vehicles has the same limitations. However, it's important to note, this applies only to vehicles that wanders around. And here is where GSX does way better than other replacement products. The airport services vehicles are, instead, customized by airport.
because GSX comes with a complete set of about 15,000 airport services files that allow to specify for each airport and each gate class the precise vehicle model, overriding the region definition and getting away with the limitation of the living world vehicle. In the following image, we can see an example. We are at Milan Malpensa Airport and the service vehicles have been replaced with an airport-specific operator livery, while the living world vehicles are coming from the region definition, which in this case was Region N, Southwest Europe. Configuring Jetway Replacement in Airports GSX comes with a set of Jetway Replacement.BGLs that are designed to replace jetways at all airports that comes with jetways, based on their positions in the default scenery. There is a separate BGL for each ICAO code that has at least one jetway in the default scenery. Since GSX doesn't change the default Asobo model, it won't visually affect third-party airports if they use the default model. However, since jetway replacement.bgl from FSDT might get a higher priority over other sceneries, it's usually best to prevent GSX jetways showing at third-party airports so the config option in the FSDT installer has options to exclude specific airports from the replacement set. In almost all situations, the GSX replacement jetway files must be disabled if you use a third-party airport, because these files are only meant to be used on default airports. Important! Handcrafted airports included in MSFS, either in the standard version or in premium deluxe updates, or as free world updates in the marketplace are considered to be third-party, even if they are made by Asobo or Microsoft. The page presents two lists, enabled on the left and disabled on the right, showing which airports are active for jetway replacement and which are disabled, showing the jetway the airport originally came with. By default, when installing GSX, it will recognize any FSDT scenery you already had installed and will place them in the disabled list automatically. You can scroll the list or just search for an ICAO by typing something in the search pattern text field to quickly find a specific airport in the list of 900 plus that have jetways in the default database. To disable an airport, double click on its name in the enabled list which will move it to the disabled list or click the button with the greater than sign. To enable an airport for jetway replacement, double click on its name in the disabled list which will move it to the enabled list or click the button with the less than sign. The triple greater than button will place all airports in the disabled list. This will effectively disable jetway replacement altogether, reverting the whole world to the single default model the triple less than button will place all airports in the enabled list. This will replace jetways at every airport worldwide. This is equivalent to the reset defaults button. The exclude third party button will automatically move all the installed third party airport in the disabled list. It's typically used after installing a new scenery. In order to be successfully recognized, Airport packages must use the standard MSFS naming convention developer dash airport dash ICIEO dash name. Important! The configuration of third party exclusion from jetway replacement is done when doing any of the following. When you first install or reinstall GSX, when you perform a GSX update. If you install, reinstall, unlink or relink any FSDT airport. If you install a new third-party scenery, just installing it won't result to automatically go here and reconfigure jetway exclusion. You should develop a habit to always check the GSX config page after installing a new third-party scenery. Failing to do so would result in parking conflicts, visible as double parking spots in the world map, and jetways malfunctions. Suggestion if you never use default airports and you always have a third-party add-on for any airport you fly into, you might consider disabling all GSX jetway replacement files at once by clicking the triple greater than button on the enabled side so they will all go on the disabled side and eventually enable an airport, 
For that time, you want to use the default scenery. Disable GSX Airport Services Airport services are disabled in the same way as jetways are, from the bottom part of the GSX config page. You can still search by ICAO and move back and forth the selected .spb files to disable or enable GSX Airport Service at that ICAO. Recognizing if a third-party airport comes with custom airport services. The easiest way to know if a third airport comes with its own custom airport services is to check if in its package a folder named Airport Services is present. If it's not, there's no use disabling GSX Airport Services. The only results it would be still GSX vehicles being replaced because of the GSX Living World file. Just they be more generic because they would be based by region instead than by airport, which is the main reason to have a GSX Airport Service set of files. Configuring GSX Menu Hotkey With this option, it's possible to configure a hotkey to call the GSX menu without having to use the toolbar menu icon. Very important! The menu hotkey will only work if the GSX toolbar icon is active, icon is white, because for performance reasons, all JavaScript code in toolbar add-ons doesn't run when their toolbar icon is inactive, icon is darkened, which means when you start a flight, you must first open GSX from the toolbar icon using the mouse, making the toolbar icon active, which from now on will respond to the hotkey until the end of the flight. If you close GSX using the toolbar icon, making the icon inactive again, you'll have to open it again from the toolbar before the hotkey can be reactivated. It is best opening the menu from the toolbar icon when starting ground operations and closing it before takeoff, since you will likely not need ground services until landing. This way, you can save a bit of performances, because when closing the menu from the toolbar icon, the menu code execution is immediately stopped. Possible key conflicts. It's your responsibility to choose a combination that hasn't been assigned to another function in Flight Simulator. The control panel can't check this, so be careful not to reuse a key that is used in the simulation or by another add-on. However, even in case of a key conflict, it won't affect the simulation if the GSX toolbar icon is inactive, since no key interception can happen in that state. By default, the hotkey is assigned to the following key combination, Control, Shift, F12, which has been the default hotkey used by previous versions of GSX, and by default it's not assigned to any other function, so it should work on most cases. Extra Ground Clutter By default, the GSX Jetway Replacement Files contains extra objects around jetways to increase detail, like tow bars, FOD bins, and traffic cones. This will increase the number of SIM objects in the scene. If you notice that in certain situations, especially with lots of AI traffic airplanes, objects in scenery or even GSX vehicles start to disappear, it's possible you have reached the maximum number of SIM objects that can be visible at any given time. By disabling this option and running the updater again, GSX will install a lightweight version of the Jetways replacement files, which contains only Jetways and nothing else, so the overall number of objects in the scene would be the same as it would have been using the default scenery Jetways it won't increase compared to default. Because a single default jetway will be replaced by a single GSX jetway with nothing extra added to the overall count of sim objects in the scene. Seated Passengers With version 3.00 released in June 2024, GSX Pro added support for seated passengers, which can board the airplane, take their seats, and stay on board during the entire flight and eventually exit the airplane from their seats after landing. This option requires supporting individual third-party add-on airplanes individually since the files required need to be pre-built in GSX and the FSDT installer must be adapted to support different styles and folder organizations used by various add-on developers to represent model variations and extra liveries. Seated passengers are an opt-in feature by default, 
they are not enabled on any airplane. To enable supported airplanes, enter the config page for GSX Pro in the FSDT installer and in the seated passengers, there will be a list of all supported airplanes which are found to be installed. Click the check mark to enable seated passengers, which will do the required changes to the airplane model files and folder, which will activate the seated passengers feature. Removing the check mark will disable seated passengers for the selected airplane and will remove any changes made by the FSDT installer to the airplane model files, adding new liveries. When you add a new livery for a supported airplane, you must start the FSDT installer again and enter the GSX config page to let GSX modify the airplane files for the livery variation that has been just added. The list will pause for a few seconds, showing seated passengers loading while it's scanning for your installed airplanes and newly added liveries. Then exit the page using the close button, airplane updates. It's possible that updates to supported airplanes might result in the model XML or the texture.cfg being reset to default by the update. If this happens, you need to enter again the FSDT config page, let it load the list of airplanes, verify the desired airplanes are still checked, and exit the page using the close button, same as when installing new liveries. Supported airplanes. As a general rule, in order to support seated passengers, an airplane should have the following characteristics. It must have a full modeled internal cabin with seats. It must not be bought on the MS marketplace. This is required because in order to attach the seated passengers on the airplane, we need to modify the airplane own behavior XML file, which on planes bought on the marketplace, even the free ones, is encrypted, so it can't be modified. If the airplane has an internal animated cockpit door which can be user controlled, this will be very useful since it allows to optimize performances by not rendering seated passengers if the cockpit door is closed. In version 3.0.70, seated passengers are supported on Fenix A320, Pilots Dash 7, Leonardo Mad Dog X, PMDG 737, and PMDG 777 how it works. Seated passengers are handled quite differently than regular walking passengers. While walking passengers are handled entirely by GSX, so they are created, moved, and animated using standard SimConnect calls, seated passengers are added through the model attachment feature of the SDK, which requires attaching the passengers to a virtual cabin object representing the seats, and attach this model to the airplane itself. While this restricts the ability to attach passengers dynamically, allowing easy user-created airplane profiles and support for marketplace airplane, it has a very big performance advantage, since seated passengers are basically an extra part of the airplane, and their creation and animation is handled entirely by MSFS, so there's zero extra traffic on Sim Connect during the flight, and passengers stays attached very tightly on the airplane even when flying at high speeds with no lag or stuttering. The only limiting factor would be your graphic card speed dark memory, but there's no handling cost introduced by GSX, which will continue to stay inactive during flight. This is all for today, folks. If you made it until here, congratulations. And thanks for your interest. Please consider to give the video a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel. It helps a lot and I really appreciate it. In the next video, we will dive deep into the GSX settings. Until then, bye-bye.